is not going to be business as usual in Nigerian ports if I become president. Peter B. The Labour Party presidential candidate Peter B. earlier today had an exclusive interview with Arise TV where he spoke on myriad issues of national importance. While speaking about his Egypt-Morocco trip, Obi said he went to Morocco in order to understudy as he wondered why would Morocco, with a population of about 36 million people, have, a better, have better ports than Nigeria with a population of about 200 million people. Obi said as an experienced businessman himself, he understands the nagging bottlenecks that negatively that are negatively affecting the costs of doing business in Nigeria. He went on to state that Nigerian ports can generate three to four times of revenue they are generating right now. He said a lot of revenue can be generated from Nigerian ports. Speaking further, Obi said the vast lands in northern Nigeria could be converted into farmlands why using Kano and Kaduna states as processing centers where goods are moved from for exports? Obi said, however, that human factors are the major problem affecting Nigeria ports, and he would ensure that he deals decisively with them if he becomes the president of Nigeria. He mentioned this comment when it came to like human development, and he mentioned the Human Development Index and how. For Nigeria's ranking, it's it's very low. It's literally, I think, bottom what bottom bottom twenty in the world, um, and so saying business will not be as usual. Basically, meaning the core of Nigeria's problem has he has always mentioned is the economy. So for Morocco, that would have thirty six million people, and Nigeria, that'd be what ten times, almost ten times, um, larger in terms of population. We cannot be so our producing capacity just too little for it to for us to actually be where we want to be. And because he said when there is no jobs, when the labor market is dwindling, of course people are pushed into criminality. And we also need a lot of investment to pay our debt and also invest, for example, in security, which is a big issue. The first opinion here states you are on course when you said human factor. I know you mean corruption, and when you talked Kaduna as a processing zone, I want you. I know you want more exports than import. Why not? We can all make this happen if we've got an, if we get a government with a will. Peter B, you are the one. Please, our incoming president, stop speaking about this port. This is the only thing Northerners have used to milk Nigeria for decades. It is their feeding bottles. You may be killed. They won't let the status quo change doesn't mean he doesn't have to talk about it i mean if he becomes president he basically would have the power and the order to make sure that the ports are well and running and of course these ports would generate more <clears throat> generate more revenue that is the whole point that is literally why he's president i mean what are you saying um yes there might be more resistance because when it comes to ownership of resources it's like the north wants to make all these things but then even wait let me even check because then statistically i think so was mentioning how nigerians were like you know teasing or making fun of south africans mentioning how they don't even own their resources and shankuri said it's the same thing here that nigerians do not own like almost 70 80 percent of like of their of their investment and of their resources and it's like, okay, fine. I don't know what the North will be holding on to in terms of what they think is theirs, especially when you have big corporations milking of this. And we have billionaires, for example, like Dangote, and we have, um, yeah, Tudelai. So we have these billionaires that they're in such strong oil industries, yet they are like monopolies. They have no competition, you know? So it's either them and, okay, fine, maybe it's like tokenism. At least you have one of your person representing you and, and who actually owns your resources but what happens to the rest and isn't it for isn't it isn't it like you say commonwealth for nigerians again so it's the thing where if the northern if the northern people want to hold on to their resources well let's actually question so who actually owns the resources because i doubt it is them if they own it 100 percent, i don't even think the part of nigeria in in simple terms everything goes back to history we need to learn 
with the way the system is today white powers in the north we have to go back again these people the same way they made contracts with the colonizers for them to always still be in power i mean these politicians come from a line of slave owners who would sell their own people and so if they make contracts especially with foreigners where they would be the ones in power where they'd be the ones that are controlling most of the wealth this same line has continued even before independence so we cannot be surprised so if any part of nigeria is really trying to hold on oh this is our resource excuse me let's go down to the real question do you actually own it because it all goes back to the question are we actually fully independent so we all need to humble ourselves and try stop trying to claim what is not i think we all need to really go and figure out the truth as to who owns nigeria because that is a the big question we'll be asking because it's not just the dis- the big distraction would be to fight against ourselves rather than fight against those that are holding Nigeria to ransom. And that would allow Nigeria, yeah, those forces that would allow Nigeria still go into debt knowing that Nigeria has no proper plan of paying them back. Basically enslaving us into future. Nah, that is, that is crazy. So again, it's like we fight ourselves and it's like you're fighting the wrong enemy. Because that would distract us from actually knowing who our oppressors are. Because we think the oppressors are the Nigerian government. Yes, they do play a role. And that's the level that we're at and the level that we can see. But trust the Nigerian government probably will have, have their hands tied as well. So, I, I think I went on a tangent when it came to resources. Because that's such a, in my opinion, that argument is not even valid at all. You might as well just even say that Nigerian government won't own anything. Please um so yes i think it's very important i think before we even get to the deep deep stuff like that it's important that if you have a president that is in the short term trying to raise revenue try to raise nigeria's gdp this this is the, this is the thing this is what would make nigeria work this it it this is this is the problem that we can fix in the short term because it would literally lead to so fixing so many solutions and i think that is and i think that's a very realistic way or realistic plan to revive nigeria's economy as as a stepping stone and as the process of getting nigeria back and i think he's right about that and so if you're going to talk about the points in co- and i mean again in the interview he compares our population literally what 200 million people and our gdp is is so low in comparison to countries especially like in europe i think it compared us to netherlands and their exports were about what 300 billion dollars and i think nigeria is like what on what like 21 billion dollars and that is a lot purely from oil which is not good at all so yeah put what you think about it in the comment section below don't forget to like and subscribe